Hi, this is Jeff Tate, and you're listening to Brigade Radio 1. You're listening to Brigade Radio 1. Let me circle back, if I could, to the question yeah. uh, we were on when Mark Romano showed up late. Um, the... <laughs> We were talking about Kirk Douglas talking about himself in the third person on Rambo and how he said, uh, <laughs> how we said it should have been a chapter title when Kirk Douglas, in chapter title in your book, when Kirk Douglas said, well, Kirk Douglas is quitting and Kirk Douglas is going back to Beverly Hills tonight. That's right. <laughs> but uh, it really did work out for you well, I think, to have the Troutman role replaced. Yes. Because Richard Crenna really oh. knew the movie, seemed to understand, and Mark is a pretty intrepid writer, so I think he kind of understood what his role, what his mechanism was in the film he knew okay Troutman is just a facilitator and kind That's of right. the, he's the backstory to why this is happening to some degree he's, Franken, he's, he's Frankenstein creating Frank, Frankenstein exactly monster. that's right <laughs> and I mean I don't mean to be riffing off of this but if you had to work with Kirk Kirk would have made it it's Kirk Douglas yeah, that's right and he would have made it his movie and it, the whole thing would have been ruined unbalanced that's true yeah you're absolutely you're very smart, you're very smart Mark well yes. you're not just a pretty face not, not just a pretty face <laughs> <laughs> but you know yeah, the, whole, the whole point is that, uh, yeah, we, we're saying, uh, what are we talking about? Sorry. Uh, Frankenstein's monster. Kirk oh, yeah, Douglas. that's right, because he has the line at, at the end and he, and where, where, where uh, Rambo says to him, to his colonel, his, he says, you conceived of me, you made me, now you kill me. You right, wanted to be killed right, by him. Yeah. And put, it, put himself yes. out of a misery because he, he found there was no place for him in this country back well, in America. And uh, I, th- well, Nothing th- is over. Nothing is over. That's right. Go ahead. And you did, the, and you had the reshoots, right? Because you, you had shot the movie where he did die. That's right. And then it's sort of like it was tested in terms of like, okay, now this is this is a yes. At first, it? It, it was always conceived of us as a suicide mission. When he comes back across that bridge at the beginning, he knows that this is going right. to end badly. Right. And it, and uh, and there was no place for him in America, like for a lot of Vietnam veterans. Right. You know, when I did that film, um, no, a lot of Americans don't know this. When I made my film, and um, in the year, well, in the year, in, year 2000, but anyway, veterans, veterans were committing suicide a thousand a month, yeah. a thousand attempt, yeah. attempts at suicide, and 350 were successful every month. We lost Vietnam veterans because we treated them so badly. Mm-hmm. The right wing thought they're a bunch of losers. The left wing thought they're a bunch of baby killers, right. and they. And they, they, they just went, they didn't want to go to, they didn't want to go fight in Vietnam. We sent them there. Was there any truth to the stories that came out after that movie about Stallone getting death threats from veterans or veterans being unhappy with what he was doing? I No. That, there is no truth to no, that. They, no, the veterans, they loved that film. They loved me. Well, I can see that. That I get. And I love the movie, too. I thought the movie actually kind of speaked to, about it in a way that yeah, they, w- was unusual at the time. Well, you know, another aspect that was brilliant about it was that he didn't, the character did not kill anybody. He yeah. was wounded, right? That's but right. he didn't kill anybody. As you said, of all the follow-ups, then that kind of went off the board. But that's why the movie works so well just as an uh, allegory. I have no idea what, what words to use to describe it. For the time he came back from Vietnam, where he'd seen right. all his friends had been killed, right. he he himself had killed uh, civilians in in the battle. The last thing he on earth he was going to come back to, to the country that he loved and start killing people. Right. I said, no. I have two yeah. quick bullet points for you. The first one is yeah. I know you conceived of it as a suicide picture, but to me, just with my limited history at feature development at Warner Brothers, when Stallone walks back over the bridge, that's when I s- s- think in my head. This guy can walk over bridges in Tijuana, in Vietnam, in Honolulu, in Moscow. There's no way this guy dies in the end. But when, as soon as he moves across the bridge, I said, this guy cannot die in the end. And I know that's early in the movie, but that is the moment where you think, there's a bridge in every country. That's right. There's, that's there's, right. there's a score to settle in every country, and this is the mechanism to do it. Do you know, they, they knocked that bridge down. Oh, too bad. I know. They put up a, it was an old wooden bridge. Oh, did they? Yeah. And people... People love it that so much. They flew in from Australia, from Great Britain, to see this bridge. Oh wow! This, the, to then this yeah. holy bridge that Rambo had walked across. Did they do screenings out there, and they have like Rambo nights oh, in that yeah. town. And, oh yeah, they love all uh, out there. Yeah, I bet that. In that, in that sound. I also have to give Brian Dennehy credit because he really kind of pay, played it as this unrepentant. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Just hardliner in yep. a way where, you know, now you can see the actor would say, well, let's have a backstory that maybe my family was killed in a car crash and I'm just an <laughs> angry sheriff. But that was just a perfect, like, you know, we don't like hippie trash nope. in this town. And yeah. 
you know, well, Trump's America, basically. But I think in the, in the book or in the story, I think he's a, he's a veteran himself from the Korean War. Mm-hmm. So he knows, so he has no, no, but he has no patience for, but for uh, Rambo. But it's but it great. still holds up when you think about it today. And I haven't seen it. I wanted to watch it before I came here again today just to see. Let me see if that holds up. But as we're talking about the movie, every image is inside the brain, right? Like I remember it exactly. And it worked. I think it, it, it must still translate today as well as it did back then. What was it, 1982? 82. Well, Chris Mulkey, who went on to do Twin wow. Peaks and 900 other things, Boardwalk Empire, sent me a text saying, Tell Ted hello. I was one of his deputies in First Blood. <laughs> Um, I got punched in the head oh, by I remember Stallone. Him. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I had to shave Stallone. He went nuts. I didn't want to cut him, and he he, 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 That's beat, right. he beat all of us to a pulp. But uh, yeah, he he has a huge amount of respect for you, as he should. But uh, it's funny how uh, the story and kind of the the police brutality leaks out almost through the deputies, like the ones with the right. conscience can't yep. really. They start letting it go, like, hey, we got really kind of rough with him in the cell block, and that That's may right. have been. The trigger. Where the fuse was lit, yeah. yeah the fuse was lit, exactly. But, and you know, you have to give credit to Stallone. Whatever your opinion may be, he sells it. He's, he sold out for that role. Well, my opinion, him, I think he was wonderful. No, not your opinion. I know you liked him. <laughs> I liked him in it too a lot. I think sometimes people take unnecessary But you know, criticism. as I told you, I may have told you before, at the time, they, they, the two guys who were financing the film were amateur producers. Right. First time producers. And they said, who do you want to play? And I said, I want Sylvester. Let's subscribe to this channel before you look uncool.